anti-CD38 based quad therapy is what we have been using in frontline and affect patient. This meta-analysis looks into reaffirming that current practice. Can you touch on your first line treatment approach and this meta-analysis findings? Definitely, as you've pointed out, for both transplant eligible, as was the presentation here, and for transplant ineligible, there have been a number of studies now that show that a quadruplet seems to be better than a triplet, and the quadruplet is with an anti-CD38 antibody, usually lenalidomide, usually bortezomib, and a little bit of dexamethasone. Here, this study combined some of the data. The Cassiopeia study, which was included here, was a predominantly European trial that did DARA with VTD, so they had thalidomide in there instead of lenalidomide. The Griffin study that Pete Voorhees led was with VRD versus DARA VRD, and the same thing was true for the Perseus study. A meta-analysis is a way to combine the results from several different well-controlled, well-designed studies as long as they are relatively similar and have relatively similar patient characteristics and the advantage is that you're able then to combine each data set and get an even larger patient sample. And what you see here in the slide is that the overall hazard ratio is really favoring the quadruplet. Patients who get the quadruplets have a better progression-free survival and also overall survival. The overall survival is especially important. Sometimes when I talk to community doctors, what I hear from them is they have a concern that if they use all of their good drugs up front, that when patients relapse, they will have fewer options available. So some of them like to reserve the DARA or Isatuximab for later. I understand that rationale because you want to make sure you've got good weapons at your disposal. But the fact that the overall survival is better shows you that doing the quadruplet up front makes sense. Keep in mind also that these are transplant eligible patients, which means you don't necessarily on all of them do DARA until progression. And so there again, you may have the option to retreat with people who have had DARA previously or isatuximab previously with another anti-CD38. The one note is that there were updated data from the Cassiopeia study recently published. You may remember that the original design had two randomizations. You got either VTD or DARA VTD induction. And then after transplant, you were randomized either to DARA or observation. The initial publication, it seemed that it was better to have DARA as maintenance but the three groups that got either DARA induction without DARA maintenance or didn't get DARA in induction but did get DARA maintenance or got DARA in both did approximately equally. Some folks interpreted that to show that maybe you didn't need the DARA in maintenance. Now with the updated data, although the three arms are still fairly close, there is a difference that favors the people who get DARA during induction as well as during maintenance. So I think that does provide an impetus to consider continuing DARA in combination with LEN during maintenance for these patients. And we are probably about a week or two away from finishing enrollment to the SWOG study, which will look at LEN versus Daryl in the maintenance setting, which hopefully will show that the combination is better and kind of cement that as a new standard of care as opposed to LEN alone. Oh, a lot to unpack here, Bob. And thanks so much for going over this thoroughly. At least for my practice, as Rahul stated, we have been utilizing quad therapy. The overall survival data reaffirms that what we have been doing is the right approach. 
Now, the question becomes, is the maintenance of daratumumab Ab or Len alone, or rather the combination? Sometimes we have been shying away from Daralen because of the, the, the long-term data. Bob, when it comes to anti-CD38, you did bring this up as well, isotuximab. I've not had a chance to utilize that. Is it very identical to daratumumab? Is there a sub-Q formulation? Is there a particular patient where you feel this is better than Dara? Yeah, great questions. Ideally, it would be nice to have a randomized study comparing them, which we do not have. Right now, as you pointed out, DARA is available in a sub-Q formulation. For esatuximab, it's still IV, but there is an on-body injection device being tested, and we're excited to have that available as well. In terms of how they're different, they do bind different portions of the CD38 molecule. Whether that's important clinically or not, we're not sure. There are some different mechanisms of action. For example, esatuximab seems more dependent on complement-dependent cytotoxicity. And although there are data in the 1Q21 patients for both, it seems that there is more data supporting the use of esatuximab in people with 1Q21 gain. I am impressed by generally a milder toxicity profile with esatuximab. For example, if there are patients with pulmonary issues, my impression is that there are fewer pulmonary complications. So if you have folks with COPD, asthma, borderline pulmonary function tests, I generally feel more comfortable giving it. And the same thing again for the 1Q21, which is actually a pretty big group of people. That's about 40 to some studies even say 60%. So we're not talking a small group there. 